Hello, this is a pathology specimen comprising part of a rib with the attached soft tissue. Here we can see some skeletal muscle tissue. And let me turn this around. On both surfaces, we can see a very large mass arising from the rib. And let's take a closer look. This mass has an extremely variegated cut surface with some darker areas of hemorrhage. We can also see these translucent grayish areas and this represents neoplastic chondroid or neoplastic cartilage and in between there are these whitish very sharply demarcated areas and these represent areas of calcification. So the calcifications will be quite obvious on the imaging and that is one of the characteristic features of this tumour which is a chondrosarcoma. Looking at the opposite surface, we can also see a few areas of cavitation and this is due to necrosis. The cartilaginous areas are also seen very well here and sometimes they may even appear a little bit gelatinous. Chondrosarcomas are malignant cartilage producing tumours. They are the second commonest matrix producing malignant bone tumour and second only to osteosarcoma. So I have uh, two examples here. This is the one that we saw earlier. In terms of the clinical features for conventional chondrosarcomas, they usually occur in middle age and there is a higher prevalence in males compared to females. They tend to favor the axial skeleton, so flat bones like the pelvic bones and shoulder region and ribs, and usually the patient will experience a painful enlarging mass. As mentioned earlier on, because uh, this tumour tends to calcify quite a bit, and we can see this in both the examples here, uh, these calcifications are readily visible on imaging studies as flocculent densities. There may also be some reactive cortical bone thickening. And the behaviour of these tumours really depends on grade. So they are malignant and they have the potential to metastasize. Uh, for grade 1 tumours that are slow growing, the 5-year survival is actually really quite high with complete resection, whereas the high grade tumours have a much poorer 5-year survival. Grossly, as seen earlier, these tumours tend to have these grey translucent cartilaginous areas. This is the matrix that is produced by the malignant cells. Sometimes they can appear a little bit um, more soft and gelatinous and there are also these calcifications and also there may be necrosis with some cystic change as we saw earlier uh, in the virtual specimen. They will grow into the medullary cavity and some of the tumours also break out through the cortex and invade into the surrounding soft tissue. Here is another example showing this very large cavitated cystic area due to necrosis. And again, we can see this cartilaginous material. Microscopically, chondrosarcomas are cartilage forming tumors. So we can usually see these islands of cartilage and these tend to invade through the trabeculae of the bone and sometimes, as mentioned, they can break through the cortex. And in this particular tumour, the malignant cartilage producing cells, they have actually broken out into this pink tissue, which is skeletal muscle attached to the bone. On higher magnification, again, we can see that there is uh, a whole area of skeletal muscle here and this is infiltrative tumour. So cartilage also appears kind of grayish microscopically and these are the malignant chondrocytes sitting within individual lacunae. This is not a high-grade tumour, this particular example. In a high-grade tumour, there would be much more prominent nuclear pleomorphism. So in summary, this is an example of a chondrosarcoma, which is a malignant tumour of the bone that produces cartilage. It is a common primary malignancy of the bone and grossly we often see a large tumour mass with greyish translucent cartilaginous areas with calcifications and sometimes with cystic areas. Thank you.